Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Wei Keng Tay. Uh, I am a bioinformatician and biocreator working at Embo EBI. I'm going to give a short talk about the FAIR wizard and making verification accessible. So I'm sure all of you are very familiar here with the slide, FAIR, findable, accessible, interoperable, reusable. Um, but one of the things that we found working with the FAIR and that has been mentioned a couple of times in this conference already is that FAIR makes for good overarching guidelines. When you look at the documentation around FAIR, it's either very, very broad abstract principles that can be difficult to apply or it's very highly technical documentation about whether or not the dataset descriptor uses a local dataset model which conforms to a domain specific set of like, um, standards. And in this case, people who are working directly with FAIR, smaller projects, larger projects can say, the FAIR principles are great, they're wonderful, how do I use them? How do I directly improve the fairness of my project or my data set? And also dealing with the challenge of FAIR being applied very much on a context specific and case by case scenario. You might be working for a large database that has the ideal of wanting to set community level fairness. You want, you're just trying to serve a large community or you might be working on a very, very small project which wants an internal group of scientists to be using this. For those two things, the level of fair that you require and the level of fair you want to hit are completely different. So the fair wizard is a accessible and freely available tool that's been made in collaboration between us at Embol EBI and the FAIR Plus Consortium, and it takes into account the case-by-case -case specific nature of applying FAIR principles and creates an actionable list of steps. So you have a concrete list of steps. You can give it to someone and say, cool, do this for the data hosting environment. Make sure our license is in there. Make sure that all of our entities have a unique identifier. Um, it takes into account multiple data types, so you can be working with protein data, DNA, clinical data, demographic data, and you, uh, it also takes into account the different data stages that you're working at. You can be at the project planning stage, you can be at the, oh, I've already got all of my data and I'm attempting to submit it now to an archive, how do I make my data fair stage, or um, different stages, all encompassing the context-specific ways that you can apply fair principles. Apart from the actionable list of concrete steps we give you, there's also a supply of resources and examples. Say you need to make your data more available in terms of FTPs or APIs or any other ways. We have a list of resources and examples of other databases, other projects that have done the same, and ways in which you can do so for your own project. Um, we talk a little bit about different user personas. The fair wizard is usable whether or not you're a wet lab biologist that wants to make submission easier for yourself. You're a curator in a data catalog trying to see what's the best practices for different data types or you're a data manager trying to support a host of scientists and figure out where best to submit the data or in what format. Um, really, really quickly, it works in terms of three stages. You have stage one, which is project examination. What's your project? Is it DNA? Is it RNA? Who are you trying to serve? Your verification goal in terms of am I trying to make it for the increased analyzability of this? Is this data going to be used by another data portal? Is this going to be internally used for a small group of people, and then finally, verification solution design. It shows a list of different possible fair actions um, available for you. Just really quickly, this is what our UI looks like. I've got a QR code at the end because everyone loves QR codes to link to what we have. We take them through a, our questionnaire in terms of what types of data do you have, project examination questions. We go through verification goal identifications. What's the primary uses of the project outcomes? and we point you towards our FAIR cookbook, a list of different resources, a list of different examples in terms of how to design your metadata standard, examples of metadata standards. Do you, ha if you work in DNA or RNA, like what are other people in the community doing? How can you use what they use, whether it's open source or communicate to them and reach out for their advice and build that community? 
Um, an example of the fair wizard output for the data access and retrieval, this is sort of what it looks like to give you a concrete idea. You know, once you go through the entire process, which does not take very long at all, then you get a list of actions for every single step here available on the left, whether it's modeling your domain, choosing a data standard, what ontologies might be useful for you to use. Um, and yeah, keeping it short and sweet, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to acknowledge uh, the wonderful people that we work with in the Fair Plus Consortium, as well as the rest of my team. We're trying to make verification more accessible to people from all across the world in different, in different places, working on different projects. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on time. That was a brilliant talk. Any questions? Let's see. No? That, um, that's a really brilliant resource, and I hope that uh, more and more people can um, take advantage of it. I would certainly look into it. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.